Today we are doing a Q&A get ready with me. Hey guys, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I help you find the best affordable beauty, makeup, and fashion items and teach you how to use them to always look elevated, polished, and put together. Thank you so much for all of your lovely questions. And if you have a question that you wanna ask me, leave it here in this video. And whenever I decide to do another q and I will answer your question. So Cassie asked, have you traveled anywhere exciting in the past few years? And I have only taken like two, well, no, I take that back. I guess I have taken a couple of trips. So in the fall of 2021, I believe it was, Josh and I, we went back to Gulf Shores, Alabama. And that is one of my favorite places to go just on an easy beach vacation. Last fall, we went to Oregon and I planned a huge trip like where we were gonna go to the Redwood Forest and then drive up the coast of Oregon just so we could see all of that. And I had planned all these Airbnb stops that we were going to stop at. We basically didn't stay anywhere for more than like a day or two until we got to Portland, Oregon. But that trip was amazing. And I highly recommend if you've never been to the Redwood Forest to definitely go. It's just like one of those things that pictures never really do the trees justice there. Like you see pictures, you even see pictures of people next to the trees or like that famous area where you can drive through a tree. And it's just like, you know that they're big, but until you actually go and see them in person, it's just like not really going to register. <laughs> Um, I went to the Redwood Forest once when I was really young, like two, and I vaguely remember it. I just wanted to go back as an adult, and it's just like you step back into another period of time. It's like you're in Jurassic Park or something. It's just so cool, and it's just like, I don't know, like such a peaceful vibe there. So I definitely would recommend Redwood Forest. And then, so like we went to um, the middle part of Oregon first, like we flew into, I'm trying to remember the city. I think it was like Bedford or something like that. I feel like I'm probably remembering that wrong. Um, but we flew into that area first, stayed there for a night, then we drove down to Crescent City, California, which was where we went to the Redwood Forest. And then after that, the next day, then we drove up the coast of Oregon and stayed in a few other places before we went to Portland. And we ended up, before we got to Portland, we stopped in Cannon. Yeah, Cannon, Oregon, which is where they filmed part of the Goonies, like where that big haystack rock is like and it's just very much like goony vibes there like it's very um in the morning it's very misty and foggy they also filmed twilight there too and it definitely has twilight vibes so i just loved oregon and i told josh if we ever did move to another state i could see myself moving to oregon not that I'm planning on moving because I just couldn't leave my family, but Josh actually used to live in Oregon for a little while. So he's actually lived there before, but yeah, really enjoyed that trip. And I also went with my best friend last year, like the first weekend of October, we went to Salem, Massachusetts Massachusetts, <laughs> to do like the whole like witch trial like tour and to also see like where they filmed Hocus Pocus. So that was such a cool and fun little weekend trip that I did with her. Those were the three main trips that I took while not like being here on YouTube. 
and it's been over a year since Josh and I have been on a vacation anywhere so we definitely need to take a vacation sometime next year. Just haven't really figured out where we might want to go. And then Sue asked how have you been doing since your layoff? Are you adjusting well? And I have definitely adjusted to being laid off from my last job for a while there. I was really struggling to just adjust to working from home and not being around like a bunch of people every day and being around all of my work colleagues. I think that was just like the hardest thing for me to adjust to because I am such an extrovert. I felt so isolated for probably the first three months, but it's been, I guess, four months or like a little bit over four months since I was laid off. I've completely adjusted and I've learned like what I need to still feel like fulfilled <laughs> with that side of my personality, like to feel fulfilled in getting enough extroverted attention, I guess. Or to meet my extroverted needs so yeah that was such a struggle at first and I'm sure those of you guys that are extroverted can relate to that from the pandemic whenever we were first on lockdown and couldn't really go anywhere and like some people just you know worked from home during that time or Maybe you also were laid off like during the pandemic and, you know, had a struggle with that, which I wasn't laid off during the pandemic. Like I had my job and I went to my job every single day. It was the job that I got laid off from later. <laughs> um, but yeah, the pandemic totally affected my company. I worked for an online retailer and I feel like they are still struggling to get back to a place where I feel like they are still struggling to get back to a place of profitability <laughs> and everything so it's like I feel like for some companies either and we did thrive at first when the pandemic first happened and I don't know maybe every like online retailer is going through this right now but it's just like I don't know I feel like some online retailers th thrived like have been thriving ever since the pandemic so yeah I don't know I just feel like my company didn't make smart decisions and then the pandemic made it worse. So yeah, there's just like that whole aspect of it. And then while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do my blush and my bronzer. And I'm gonna be using the Rare Beauty Blush in Grateful, which is a really beautiful red. And then just like the bronzer stick. And I can never remember what the shade is on this because it's like worn off the bottom. The next question was asked by Mariah and she asked if I still meal prep and if she asked if I'm still lifting weights and I go in my phases with meal prepping. It's like now that I am working from home full time doing YouTube and also like reselling stuff on Macari, I... I don't know it just depends on the week sometimes I'll meal prep but other times I'll just like cook things for lunch since I'm just at home and it's not like a big deal but if I was still going to a job and I wasn't working from home I probably would still be meal prepping just you know because I'd kind of have to for one unless like the job where I worked at provided like food I mean, I guess, you know, if your job doesn't provide food, you could always, like, go out and get something to eat somewhere. But, yeah, definitely would still be meal prepping if it wasn't for me working from home. Um, and then with the whole lifting weights. So, I took a huge break. Like, the last time... I seriously li was lifting weights was around this time of last year 
and I kind of stopped lifting weights at the end of December last year and January, and I've had a few moments where I've tried to get back into it, but it's like I've gotten so out of I don't really want to say so out of shape because I don't think I'm like super out of shape, but like when it comes to lifting weights, I am just not like where I was. So I almost need to start out at like beginner level again and work my way back up, which I don't think that I ever really plan on lifting super heavy weights again. I mean... If you can do that, I definitely recommend it because it is really good for your muscles and bone health and everything, but it was just really exhausting for me to be lifting that much all the time, and I mean, I definitely like having more muscle tone, but I almost felt like my muscle tone was more than I wanted, and I, I wasn't bulky, like I didn't look like a man. But I just felt like with my body fat that I probably am never going to lose because I'm not going to super restrict my eating. Like, I just felt too fluffy with the muscle definition that I had. So, I don't know. I feel like I have been trying to get back into lifting, but I just don't see myself ever lifting super, super heavy again. Just because, like I said, it just takes so much out of you and I just get too bulked up for my liking. I kind of like to look a little bit softer, but be a little bit toned. Which, I mean, I know like in the fitness world you can't tone. But I don't like to have that super hard look. But I also don't want to look flabby. So there's like a fine balance in that so if I ever find a good balance in all of that I'll definitely film maybe some vlog videos on what I'm doing I mean I haven't been like not working out at all like I walk every day like I definitely try to hit my 10,000 steps every day and now that I'm working from home I really have to try super hard to hit that goal um, cause if I don't try to walk on the treadmill for at least an hour and a half every day, like I'd only hit like anywhere from 1500 to maybe 3000 steps a day. And that is just not healthy. So I want to eventually get like a standing desk and, um, maybe like one of those walking pads underneath of the desk so whenever I'm editing or wa like watching my finalized video that I can just walk on a treadmill because I do a lot of sitting during the day which at my old job I definitely did sit a lot as well but I had to walk really far like I worked in a warehouse so I had to walk really far to my car to the break room to the bathroom so <laughs> I don't have that aspect anymore like my bathroom is literally like I don't know 10 steps away from where I'm sitting so yeah I have to be very purposeful with my steps but yeah I feel like I spent way too long <laughs> talking about that subject Lara asked me what part of being a creator is your favorite and least favorite so Definitely my favorite part is creating a community here on my channel and getting to interact with you guys. I know sometimes I'm not always the best with responding back to all of your comments, but it's just because YouTube takes so much time coming up with like the content editing. It's a lot to stay on top of. And so sometimes it might be a while before I respond back to your comments. I appreciate all of your comments and I read all of your comments, even if I don't always respond back. So I don't want any of you guys thinking that I'm like, don't care about your comments or anything like that, because I definitely do. Um, so that is definitely my main thing that I love about being a creator is interacting with you guys. My second favorite thing is filming and coming up with content. I love doing that. It's so fun. And I also really love editing the footage. 
and I love playing in makeup. All of those things are my favorite things to do. But I guess like what my least favorite part about being a creator is just the fact that with like YouTube, it's constantly changing like the platform and the things that they offer on the platform. Like, you know, there used to not be shorts and now they're shorts and like there's just so many different things that I feel like I've constantly got to be learning and improving if I want to stay relevant and to get my channel out there so people can find me. So that is definitely one of the things I dislike most about being a creator. And then also, you know, it's like my other work colleagues, which would be other YouTubers, sometimes it's just hard to meet people and interact with them. It's like if I was a much bigger YouTuber, maybe I would get invited to brand events where I could meet other YouTubers and make better connections with people but it's it's kind of hard that part of it is hard and then of course like negativity is always a hard thing to deal with on your channel but what I have learned is to just ignore the negativity or YouTube also has a feature where you can hide a user from your channel so that person would not know that they're hidden. They can still watch all of your videos. They can actually still comment, but they are the only person that can see the comment if you are to hide that person from your channel. So if I ever have really rude comments on my channel, I just had the user like I'm not gonna fool around with that on my channel and it is my channel it is my happy place and I want it to also be a happy place for you guys when you come here I don't want you scrolling down into the comment section and seeing a bunch of negative stuff in the comment section so that <laughs> is how I go about dealing with that on my channel and it's really the best way to do deal with it. And I'm so glad that YouTube has that as an option these days. I'm just using the Wet n Wild Maryland palette. I've actually really been enjoying this little palette and I'm just gonna do like a really quick and simple look today. I feel like I'm gonna have to hurry up with these questions because I've been spending such a long time on everything. Okay, Janet, is that the next question? Oh, I totally skipped. Um, Okay, Connie asked, who are some of your favorite YouTube beauty channels to watch? So definitely my friend that I've vlogged with and I went and saw like a few, like I guess maybe like a month or two ago. Her name is Abby and she also has a beauty channel. I love watching her channel, of course, because it's like I'm hanging out with her and she's a friend in real life. So I love watching Abby's channel and all these beauty channels I have linked down below, but probably a lot of them you guys follow and know the people. Um, the other person that I obviously used to love to watch was April, my other friend, but she doesn't make videos anymore. Um, I love watching Emily Noel and Jessica Braun. I love watching both of them. Jen Phelps, um, Ali Gans, Glans, Gans, <laughs> Ali Gans, I guess that's how you pronounce her last name. Um, and I'm trying to think of who else. I still watch Makeup by Tiffany D occasionally. Um, I know that she's not like a super like beauty. I mean, she still talks about beauty, but she also talks about a lot of fashion stuff um, and house things and I know that sometimes some of her recommendations are really high end. I do feel like over the years she has collabed a lot with Walmart and stuff. So she does talk about more affordable things. Um, I also watch Lisa Lisa D1 and she's kind of like Makeup by Tiffany D. They're like people that I have followed for a very long time. Oh, also Shan XO. She is a beauty YouTuber from New Zealand. And I have followed her for such a long time. Like her and Makeup by Tiffany D are some of the like longest followed, and Emily Noel, are some of my like longest followed beauty YouTube channels. 
Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else that I'm forgetting. I'm sure there's other beauty channels that I have like forgotten to men mention, but those are like my main channels that I watch. I also watch Lip Gloss with Leslie. She's a sweetheart. So those are pretty much all of the beauty channels that I watch here on YouTube. And there are a lot of other like types of channels that I watch that are not beauty. I watch a lot of like productivity channels or channels to help YouTube creators be more successful. Um, and I also like to watch a lot of like feminine energy channels. I find a lot of value in those people as well. So yeah, I follow and watch a lot of YouTube. Like I was telling Josh that I would be completely fine if we canceled all of our streaming services as long as I had YouTube because I could just watch YouTube. A lot of times when I'm walking on the treadmill for an hour and a half, that's what I do. I just catch up on all of my YouTube videos from the people that I like to watch. Okay, and then Jessica asked, do you have a go-to go holiday makeup look? And I definitely do. I feel like my go-to for a holiday makeup look are like the ones that I've recently posted. Either I usually like to do a gold, like a an eyeshadow look that's like golden or bronzy and a red lip. Or I'll do a look where it's like really minimal eye makeup look and a red lip. Any kind of eye look <laughs> with a red lip is my go-to holiday makeup look. And I just love red lipstick around the holidays and in the fall months and in the winter months. It's just my favorite. You guys know, like, I'm in my red era right now. And that's, like, all I'm going to do with my ass today. It was super simple. All I did was use this color, like, all over the crease and lid. And then I just put this on the lid. So just those two colors. And I feel like that creates such a beautiful look. Like I have been enjoying this little palette so much and I know that maybe it's not like extremely different from the um, Walking on Eggshells, but for me it is because this shade is not as shimmery as the shade in this palette and it's also not the same color. This is more pink. This is more rose gold. I also really enjoy this peachy shade that I used all over the lid. It has a little bit of a satin finish, so it's really beautiful. This palette doesn't have that. This shade here is slightly darker than the shade, sorry, I feel like I'm not really showing you guys, than this shade here. This shade is darker than that. This brown is not quite as dark as this brown, so yeah. I mean, like I told you guys, I wish that the shimmery white in this was just a matte white and this would be like probably my number one Wet n Wild palette, even over Walking on Eggshells. Um, so yeah, I really like this. I hope that they decide to make this part of their permanent collection because it is that good. And then I'm just going to go ahead and mist my face with my makeup setting spray like before I do my mascara. Janet asked, what are your favorite fall, winter, fall and winter blushes and lip colors? So definitely any type of red blush. So like this or like the one that I put on the Rare Beauty in Grateful. I love these reddish blushes for the winter and fall months just because it gives you that you were outside and it was cold and you came inside like a really nice natural flush and this Tarte blush is in natural beauty and I'm pretty sure they still sell this but this has been a long time favorite blush I know it's not drugstore but I feel like Tarte is a little bit more affordable for high-end makeup um, and I do feel like these rare beauty blushes are worth the hype and worth the price I feel like this blush would last me a lifetime. Like there is so much product in here. And I also really enjoy like rosy colored blushes for that same reason as the red. It gives you that nice flush. And any type of kind of terracotta 
like color like this. This is the Wet n Wild Old School <laughs> Color Icon Blush in Mellow One. And this is my classic go-to fall blush. I always love to bust this out in the fall months. So those are definitely my go-to blushes for that time of the year. And then for lipsticks, I mean, I already told you guys that red lips is definitely a go-to for fall and winter. And then besides red lips, and these two are probably my favorite red lipsticks from the drugstore, the Maybelline Matte Ink in Pioneer and the Maybelline Vinyl Ink in Wicked. I love these two reds. They're very like bright, more, I guess, kind of blue toned reds or pink reds. And then this other red lipstick, which is what I'm about to wear today. This is from the brand Tony Moly, which is a Korean beauty brand, but this is a lip stain. But as you can see, this color is more of a warm red, like an orangey red, and this is in the color Shocking Ruby. This is in Red Shocking, which is more in alignment like with these tone of reds, like it's more of like a pinky red. But I wanted to wear this one today just because I have not worn like an orange red lipstick in a video yet. But I bought both of these from Tony Moly, like from their website, and they run $19 each. So I know that that is more expensive than drugstore, but I do feel like for a long wearing lip product, it's more affordable than a lot of high end brands. Like most things are $23 and up if you look at Sephora. So if you have been on the hunt for a very long wearing lip stain because these last for a really long time, I would say that they last as long as like the Superstay inks and they're not tacky like these. Like these feel like nothing on your lips. Once that gloss wears down, it's just like a matte stain. And I do find that if I eat something that has oil in it, it does break down the stain. And so you do have to reapply these, but it doesn't get thick or heavy. Like sometimes these lip, lip products can do if you reapply them like over top of whatever's left on your lips. These do not do that at all. So if you have been on the hunt for something like this, do recommend it. I'll have the link for these down below and they do offer other colors like bright magenta. They're mostly like bright reds or bright pinks, but I mean, most red lip stains out there turn pink and these don't, like these stay true to red. So I was on the hunt back in the summer to find a very long wearing red lip that wouldn't feel heavy on the lips. And so I stumbled upon these and they are some of my favorite red lips. Um, I know I haven't had a chance to talk about them yet in a video, but I finally got my chance. So I wanted to mention these to you guys. But also like my favorite fall lips for like fall and winter, the these two Wet n Wild lipsticks, this one in Mochalicious, which if you guys have been subscribed to me for a while, you've heard me talk about this, but it's like a brown mauve nude, which is just perfect for fall. And then this other color, which is in Cherry Bomb, which is a very dark, like berry red. And that's also in line with this Urban Decay Lipstick and Cherry, which I know that this is discontinued and it was just like a limited edition lipstick they did with their Naked Cherry palette, but that is still a huge favorite for fall and winter. So love these lip colors for that time of the year. And I'm actually gonna apply the Wet n Wild Big Papa today. I know I normally wear like brown mascara, but I've just been enjoying this mascara. I really like the formula on this. But my next question was from Beth 
and she asked, do you have any favorite or go-to devotional books? And I do have a couple that I really like. So let me get this mascara on real quick and then we'll talk about those. So my two favorite devotional books, this one I have mentioned before, but, and this is the one that I used to read sometimes at the end of my videos, which I'll definitely have to do that again sometime, but this is The Blessings for Morning and Evening, and the author is Susan Larson. So I will link this book down below if you're curious about it. And then this other book, my sister-in-law sent this to me, and this is Breath is Prayer, Calm Your Anxiety, Focus Your Mind, and Renew Your Soul. And this is by Jennifer Tucker. And it uses different like scriptures as meditations. So I've really been enjoying this book as well. This video is getting pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and end it. I know that there was a few other questions. So maybe I'll have to answer those in a future Q&A. Get ready with me. I hope that you guys have a great holiday season. Thank you so much for all of your lovely questions. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.